Greetings everyone, the Good Sir Knight here, and yeah, we're in a transitional phase. So, if you were wondering where I've been and where I've, what I've been doing, well, back was out for like two and a half weeks. And that was fun, that was a good way to celebrate turning 30. And uh, yeah, so, we're in a transition period. We've got a, bit of, a few bits of new gear coming in to sort of upgrade the setup a bit. We're moving away from the... What was it? The tan plate carrier we have here into a same LVT 6094, but newer 20, the 2016 as opposed to this 2014 model, and in actual Coyote Brown. So these magazines will blend in much better instead of standing out whenever we're in brush and stuff and doing our own thing. So that's the first big improvement. We've got a Glock 17 on the way, so we'll actually have a handgun to work with. I've been really on and off with handguns throughout the entire time I've done Airsoft, and ultimately they're good to have, especially in really close quarters CQB setups, or if your weapon's on a sling like mine, which really handy in most situations, but when you're doing a uh, more CQB sort of setup, being able to you know, transition shoulders quick, I usually just take the sling off of my body, to transition faster, but you know, each their own whether it's faster, but in between magazines and reloads, being able to always get that handgun out nice, quick, and easy. Huge boom. It's actually a bit of a inconvenience with the med kit here. I'm actually move this IFAC around off to the left side just to open up the clearance, and uh, who knows? I'll do something with these grenades. I might move the grenades back. I like having grenades because they're super useful for dealing with people who are really hunkered down or inside a building that you need to breach, but most of the time we're running our good friend the Polar Star here. So Polar Star mostly likes going pop, 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 and occasionally having that safety of the handgun. So with all that being taken into account, this is the main reason I keep the sling on here, by the way. It's comfy. It's nice to have. And yeah, so the main benefit to having grenades is clearing those people out, but I don't necessarily like to be the one who has to take my Polar Star and go, oh, well, we've got this situation here. We're just going to lower the Polar Star real quick. Then we have the handgun on standby. It's going to get a grenade out here real quick, you know, taking time, getting that prepped and everything. I'd rather, I'm actually probably going to do, actually, I might even do this in the near, near future. I'm probably going to take these grenades off of here and we're going to mount them back here onto the uh, sides of the assault pack. So because the Good Sir Knight is a big fan of uh, having a team backing him up. I'll be able to be going pop, pop, I'll get to a corner, I'll be like, hey, we're gonna breach this area over here, get a, get a grenade off my back. <laughs> I should call them monkeys. Now, I'll have my, uh, having a team, what's great about having a team is I can be up here, I can be holding this position, my teammate can prep the grenade, get the grenade ready for me, pull the pin, and then as soon as we're ready, I'll reach back left-handed, keep one finger on the or next to the trigger at all times, get the grenade, then lower the weapon. Grenade goes out, weapon comes back up, and we can breach from there. That's preferred way. I like to think about the big game strats, but I also like to think about having a team ready. I could keep them up here, where they are now, and just prep my grenades normally from there, but I think having this right side slick for easier handgun access is probably going to be the way to go. Move these grenades back and how much space do I have back here? A bit is a good deal. I might get some belt mounted, uh, whatchamacallit, tacos for at least one taco for the handgun or something just so I can mount on the belt. So that's nice and easy. I pack out of the way. We can make it work. So yeah, you're constantly if you ever played with gear before, you know there's a lot of moving stuff around and finding that perfect balance for yourself. But yeah, it leads me to a fun little thing I've been talking to my buddy Mythic and several other people about, is when you're going through all this different gear and stuff. I know someone's freaking out that I'm holding my rifle like this. That's why I'm doing it. It's for you, boo. But I know, um, what you call it? yeah. The more you move your gear around, the less likely you are to be affected with it, and that's going to be problematic all the time. This is three mags. It's very simple. You don't have to worry about two mags, and if you ever need more magazines, if you ever lose one or something, you can always have an ammo guy or someone around or a bag of mags. And you can just like, oh, yeah, I need a new magazine. I'm just going to bloop, ka-chink. 
options. But yeah, so. Uh, you just need to get caught up on the, the pistol. Okay. But yeah, so you got all these different things you can be doing. And moving your gear around to where it's effective. And finding a way to keep it is a big thing. But yeah, as far as talking to my buddies, we like to have a lot of discussions about different helmets and gears and everything. And yeah, there's a lot of things to be taken into account, like Opscore. A lot of people absolutely love Opscore, but you read into it a lot more, you learn a lot more things, you find out Opscore actually spent the least amount of time developing their carbon fiber helmet compared to, say, Team Wendy and I believe MTech and a few things. So they just made the same shell, put some holes in it. But now, there's always going to be pros and cons. Well, Opscore is a very well known and fairly well loved company. There are people like better things with the Team Wendy thing. A huge reason that a lot of people particularly don't seem to care for Team Wendy seems to tie in entirely to political reasons. And I mean, I, I can see where they're coming from, but things if you look at it from a more objective standpoint, they make a pretty good helmet. Obviously not this one, that's off score, but Team Wendy makes a pretty decent helmet. And they're known for having the best uh, retention system, the cam fit and the best liner, which is a lot of fancy pads, to be to have the paddings better to Opscore and stuff to where people are actually buying helmets and solving that with Team Windy gear because it's more comfortable and you don't get a lot of comfort wearing armor so you, you take what you can get. Um, so yeah, that's all pretty cool stuff. But um, yeah, I'm thinking in sometime in the near future, because I do like Cry Precision quite a lot, I'll probably get a Cry Airframe ATX, preferably because Stopping handgun rounds and stuff is nice, but airframes are nice. Get one of those, look into that, see how nice it is, and probably stick with that as a primary helmet. Move away from the carbon fiber. I have a, just going through reviews and talking to people, a lot of people really don't like the OCC dial. And the headband thing, kind of nice for stability and stuff, but the more you look into it, if you just get better padding, you can avoid the headband tension altogether and save yourself some headaches. Not to mention the little bit of the nape back here, but just a normal soft. Well, modern H nape, not the old school garbage ones they used to have, but the more modern H napes, and particularly the X nape that I have on my ACH Mitch 2000, really, really comfy. But yeah, so Opscore is nice. The shroud alone is probably the most important part of the helmet if you're a big NVG guy. And yeah, I've got a lot of things to look into, but the whole thing you're balancing weight wise is keeping your uh, bone snake from getting compressed and causing discomfort and. Uh, long-term disability. So if you're mixing most ballistic helmets with NVGs, I think Opscore got really light, but there's a few. I know they're working as far as I can see, but from what I've been reading a lot too, they have more back face deformation as a result of their higher weight, of their lower weight and uh, somewhat less coverage. But you know, again, there's a fun thing. There's basically the tiers of gear where it's like, hey, this is absolute condor garbage it will get you killed and then you kind of get into this more middle area where i guess you're gonna put like 511 and a few other things is where it's like hey this gear works it's at a decent price you can make it work for you and everything will be okay and then you get to like god tier gear but you can anywhere within that range everything is going to be a-okay X you come down mostly to your personal preference. Some people are gonna like the Opscore setup, other people are gonna find the few pads to be hot spots to get uncomfortable. Some people are gonna prefer the Cry airframe because of the passive ventilation, and other people are gonna go more towards like uh, Team Windy and uh, MTech, because MTech seems to have their cool thing going on. There's also the M3, was it ultra lightweight ballistic bump or whatever they call it. So there's lots of cool gear out there and working your way between it all is all on you so the carbon fiber here it's an okay helmet it's as i talk to people definitely cost more than it should apparently opscore is the reason carbon fiber helmets got jacked way up in price because they used to be down closer to 200 price range and then opscore is like oh hey here's a 770 dollars carbon fiber everyone else is like well if we can make more money yeah it's 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 whatever but it, going on to you is with all the gear reviews and stuff I like to do, you start somewhere, and I was initially Marine Corps, you might oh, well, Marine Corps, you know, hard charge, shoot everything, have a good time, but a lot of the Marine Corps thing is focused on basically having, like, your main weapon, so you got your M4, and mastery of that. If the M4 is what you're using, master the M4. 
learn a bit about the 240 problem and all the other stuff. If you're not carrying it, you just need a rudimentary knowledge. And you get people who go crazy deep into M4, constant shooting and stuff. You have people ricochet rounds under cars, they'll bounce rounds off walls and do all these crazy trick shots and have this insane amount of accuracy. And they get all that from, well, using the same platform a long period of time. So if you do ask them to upgrade to like a SCAR or something different, it might be tempting and objectively you can say it's a better rifle, but they have so much mastery on the M4 that swapping that skill over and having different small, small differences in trajectory and stuff, it's probably just better to keep them on the M4. And yeah, Marine Corps wise, you're using all sorts of gear that should have been dis decommissioned years ago, but you have insane maintenance and everything going on. And uh, yeah, so you get pretty basic gear. You learn fast enough pretty quickly. On contour is garbage because it rips a half. So you use it for anything real. But you do get other stuff. Eagle, it's decent. The uh, I know the scalable plate carrier is apparently really cool. But you learn about other companies. Particularly one of the big things I learned from Airsoft that I didn't get from the military. Yeah, well, there's a twist for you. Is uh, I learned about LBT from my good buddy uh, the Demon Ogimi. And he got me into LBT, and LBT makes just god-tier gear. This thing is steady and amazing. And yeah, so you learn about all sorts of cool gear. You learn about, I learned about Warrior Assault Systems from getting my modular assault pack, that they don't call a modular assault pack. But really comfy, low IR things, although not a lot of people are using nods to begin with, so you know. Whatevs. But yeah, Cry Precision was one of the big things I learned about. Cry is basically a god at making gear because I've never been more comfortable in my life and my wife yells at me when I <laughs> try to sleep in this uh, combat shirt and uh, pants so fun stuff you can keep, keep, keep that in mind um, but yeah so between doing airsoft which is mostly just fun for me to learn different things point out my own mistakes what I do with my videos of gameplay is I know they're not terribly popular on YouTube the whole reason I started doing it was because I wanted to see what I was doing and what I could do better. I'd watch videos, particularly when I first started, I'd be like, you know what, I'm playing too far back, I'm not playing nearly as aggressively as I should be, and I could be doing better. And it was basically that over the course of years until I got to where I am now. One of the big things, for those of you who still aren't doing it, get a face mask. Even in Japan where they're not required. Face mask has such a huge psychological effect because you know Unless someone's shooting a very, very hot gun, your teeth are staying where they are. And not having the old school dreams of, oh, my teeth are falling out, terrible things are happening, is a huge psychological boon, and it'll help you play more aggressively. And that's, if that's not enough reason to do it, then, you know, full steel eye pro, just making sure your eyes aren't going anywhere. You got two of those, you have a few more teeth than two, so. Well, you might be from one of those states. <laughs> but yeah, you know. So guard your teeth, guard your eyes, and with that you're basically impervious to damage. So yeah, you can play as aggressively and hard as you want. You can run straight into like 20 different guys, just bah, 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 and they might be so surprised they probably wouldn't even shoot you. It's an option. It's possible. I wouldn't guarantee it. I wouldn't risk it. But it's nice being able to know that even if someone just pops up like three different 120 round grenades into you at one time, Bukake style, you're gonna be okay. Hopefully, you'll pr you'll probably be fine. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? But yeah, you'll probably come with, out with a bunch of red marks and everything, particularly if you're not wearing anything resembling armor. But you know, to each their own. Benefit of armor, other than having you listen for that loud pink, so you know you're hit, is uh oh yeah, weights. The extra weight actually causes you to have some form of physical fitness. Which means you're not sitting on your couch and not getting fat. I mean, to each their own. I'd say the better physical shape you can get yourself into, then uh, the harder you should push yourself. Personal opinion. Feel free to disagree. Don't at me on Twitter. <laughs> don't. Just don't. So yeah, all the different stuff. Fun things to do. And yeah, so you get different gear. You work your way up. But doing gear reviews, what, for whatever reason, just took off for the channel wise is you start with your base knowledge, it's like, okay, well, basic plate carriers, armor carriers, chest rigs and stuff, but you really kind of build your knowledge base, so, never got to play with a Blackhawk holster, Serpa, I'm cringing, I'm sorry, but when you never got to play with those, you're used to just the cheap, generic, universal holsters, 
And those are fine for time. What are we at right now? Oh, we're definitely getting to the minutes. So, well, I guess we'll go ahead and hurry. So you start with just a, like a circle holster and you're like, wow, active retention. I feel like I might discharge the weapon accidentally as if it shouldn't be disengaged close to the trigger with your trigger finger. But you see active retention and you go, wow, there's no little clip buckle or anything I need to worry about disengaging before drilling the weapon. And I could put it back without having to re-engage said clip or Velcro and save myself a ton of time. That's awesome. And then you learn about Safari Land and you feel like a complete dum-dum. And you possibly go back in time and you redact your videos and start removing stuff from the internet so people don't make the same mistake. Because I also, when I was running an MP5, MP7 setup, got 511 long magazine pouches. Nice! They are good. I initially had a Condurp once because I needed anything that could hold an MP5 mag. And the Condurp was nice and cheap and uh, pretty much garbage <laughs> for the most part. But I was like, yeah, I can carry magazines. I am happy boy. And then from there I learned 511. I was like, oh, well, 511 holds these mags much better and are way superior to Condor. But at that time I didn't even realize 511s leaving in the middle tier area, there are better ones. And now you have the HSGI tacos that came out however many years ago and have had a completely unchanging price throughout all of time. And the tacos are nice because you can just click every magazine in there. And I haven't had a chance to really play with the taco, I'd like to swap these up to three tacos and get some handgun tacos that can hold the magazines and stuff, but yeah, you know, I'm checking that timer. But you got all this crazy stuff that's really cool and it's fun to play with and you learn a lot from it, so. Then you've got the Tactical Tailor Universal Mag Pouches. They still have the same Velcro and stuff. They're good and they do keep your magazines completely protected, but that's going to be more of your stuck out in the field for extended periods of time magazine retention. Whereas if you're doing a bit more high speed, close to the airsoft, you're going to be closer and throwing out rounds a lot faster and need those speedy reloads. Swapping these out with Crydex inserts is a good start, and uh, if you can get tacos, then even better. Of course, if you were going to be doing the infantry thing, you would definitely want the magazines protected because if they're just in Crydex or whatever, if you're in some blazing sun or swamp or whatever, and you're just completely uncomfortable. Or you go through some waterway, there's always the chance that magazine might go float away. And then you go, oh, pop, 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 click, drop mag, it's like, oh, there's, there was a mag here. So yeah, depending on how high speed and fast your operations are going. Depends on what you're going to want, but ultimately, you have garbage gear, and then you have basically your acceptable gear, your got to gear, and you can use anything between there and be A-OK. -okay. So, transitional period, waiting for a fanny pack, Coyote Brown, chest rig, or play carrier, play carrier, maybe a chest rig, depending on if, if uh, Mythic goes through with hooking it up, we'll have a review for you there, and yeah, we'll get an airframe here sometime too, because I really, really want an airframe. Cries are cool, and of course Glock 17. We'll probably get a taco review if I can get some tacos from Red Beard or Demon of a Gamey or whatever. But yeah, so transitional period. My back is feeling better. This plate here isn't kicking my ass like it used to. And with any luck, we'll be getting the team patches finished up soon, all the official team together, maybe do an introductional video. And uh, yeah, we will head out to the field and we will wreck bodies as per tradition dictates. So that's all I got for you guys. Um, hopefully I'll be getting a lot more better videos and stuff going on here soon. Hopefully I'll get some gameplay so I don't feel like I've been sitting around for the last two months doing nothing due to back injury. Oh, and the biggest thing, I'm transitioning jobs. So, uh, yeah, I will be leaving the current job into a new employer. And there's all that fun stress and insomnia coming back, so, yay. If that goes well, I'll have more free time to go do more pew pew, so. Cheers everyone, stay chivalrous, I will see you in the upcoming videos, and we will try to look as Gucci as possible. Cheers. See you guys. Get closer. Static effect. Static effect.